The last two weeks have been incredibly busy. I'm about to leave my apartment and go travel, and I feel rushed in tying up loose ends here in Montreal. It's all going so fast. This week, I wanted to finish this Radharani painting, which was left, as you see here, by a devotee who passed away long ago. When I was a child, I used to look at his paintings up on the temple ceiling, feeling as if I was entering some magical world. I thought to myself then, one day, I want to finish these paintings. I had never expressed that wish out loud, but recently, I was asked to finish and touch up the paintings. I truly believe Krishna heard my quiet childhood wish, and I feel so happy I get to work on these now. The last few clips of this video will be showing the result, and you'll see some of the process along the way. A kirtan was organized on the beach, and a few friends came to sing and celebrate my birthday. That day was filled with beautiful gifts from Krishna, from my friends. There was cake, twice, delicious prashadam, beautiful devotional music, and so many other little blessings. I got to paint Radha at the temple all day. The more I share with Krishna and engage with him, the more loved and cared for I feel, the more blessed I feel, and the more value. I've been struggling with my self-worth forever, and though I still am, serving God and engaging in my relationship with Him, even if not perfectly, I've been shown that He does care, and He does love me. And that is something I've been needing to know and feel for lives. This Radharani painting is the first I'm finishing up. I might do another one, but we'll see if I got enough time before going traveling. My dream is to serve Krishna through my artistic inclinations and be able to make a living in this way too. I want to give meaning to my existence through helping people, offering inspiration, healing, and guidance, and I want all of this to be of service to Krishna, pleasing him and nourishing our relationship. Because ultimately, I want to go back to him. I want to remember who I truly, truly am. The closer I get to the moving date, the more I realize that I am very confused about what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know, like, it's like, the plan isn't super clear and it's kind of stressing me out because I'm going and leaving everything behind and I don't know where that's going to lead me. And to be honest, it's scary and it's stressful. <sighs> My intention in doing this is to get more clarity on what my purpose is because I know it's weird, it's like I know what my purpose is I know everything that I want but I don't know 
how it's gonna form itself. I, I don't know how to materialize it. I just know, I just have pictures in my brain, like of in, in my heart of like, what is my vision, but then how do I get there? What is good, what form is it gonna take really? There's so many paths that are possible and it's like, okay, but which one, which one is the one that I should be taking? Which one is the one that is going to be best suited for me? And I guess it's a bit like a lesson of surrender. Surrendering to to God because ultimately he's in control. Ultimately he's going to guide my path. Ultimately he's going to shape everything. And I really just have to listen. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> this week was my friends and I's yoga festival. We plan on making them throughout Canada as we get to the Hare Krishna farm in BC. They have been putting so much effort into making this happen, and it was such a success. Thanks to those in charge of promoting, so many strangers showed up and got to do yoga, kirtan, and other beautiful activities with us. The essence of yoga is connection with the Supreme Being. Some people call him the Divine the universe, the higher self, or God. In the Vedas, he is called Krishna. As we connect with Krishna, we get a glimpse of his spiritual energy, which sparks an awakening within the self, or the soul. Then, we get to start the process of remembrance, which allows us, gradually, to remember who we are as souls. What is our relationship to God? And what is our purpose as living entities? Growing up with this knowledge has saved me from so many trials and I just wish everyone would know so that they wouldn't have to suffer as much. I think suffering is inevitable in this world, but the more our soul awakens, the more transcendental to the suffering we become. Which is honestly why I'm so driven in seriously pursuing this process. Full awakening can be achieved through any genuine yoga process prescribed in the Vedas, but the easiest and fastest one is that of Bhakti Yoga, our devotional service, which can easily be practiced by chanting the Maha Mantra or by engaging our senses in the worship of Krishna. Here, people are dancing, singing, eating sacred food and hearing about Krishna, which are all activities of devotional service. Make him, make him. <laughs> My spiritual master came and hosted a wonderful kirtan at our festival. Strangers singing the Maha Mantra, dancing and laughing together. It worked out so well, and I felt so happy with the people's receptivity. I felt so fulfilled, seeing them engaging in bhakti, and so grateful for my guru. It was a very inspiring moment. Spending so much time painting Radha, I have been reflecting on my relationship with her. Radha is Krishna's feminine counterpart. She is Krishna's source of pleasure and an example to follow for all of us parts and parcels of Krishna. Krishna is most pleased when served with pure love and devotion, and his parts and parcels are most happy when he is like a lover is most happy when his lover is, which is why Radha is so wonderful. She knows exactly how to please Krishna, and as she pleases him, she receives even more pleasure. I wish I knew, or could, please Krishna in the same way.
Whatever food I eat, I offer to God first. Though my thoughts are very self-centered, I do this so to practice making Him a priority over myself. True love is selfless, and though my love for God is very much selfish, I do wish to become more sincere. The truth is, I'm feeling jealous of Radha. I wish I could be as sincere as she is. I wish I could share loving pastimes with Krishna like she does. But I know I could never be as good as she is, because she is the source, and I am but a conditioned soul. This jealousy I feel is of course ego-based. Here my self-worth is based on Bali experiences, which do not represent my soul's truest value. But still the feeling is there. And I wish to spiritualize it, so to see myself as I truly am, and feel love for Radha rather than envy. Radha has actually been such a big help in my spiritual advancement towards Krishna. I've seen her giving blessings in my life so that I get closer to Krishna and teaching me about true selfless love. My love for Krishna is fooled by a personal desire to be truly and eternally happy, which I know to be only possible with God. That isn't selfless, and she's been protecting me and guiding me so to bring me closer to God. I wish to one day love like she does. In the spiritual world, there's no envy. Radha and her friends are all uplifting each other in their attachment for Krishna, and they're all happy. If we could all get there, it would be truly blissful. Thank you. I love you.